here is the eHelp 12 volt hydraulic electric car jack. So if we open the case up, we've got the actual jack itself here, which just lifts out. Impact sockets, 12 volt adapter for a battery, 12 volt lead, some gloves, and then you've got an impact driver. As well as that, there's an extension bar for the jack, which allows you to extend the height of the jack. Powering up the jack is very simple. Take the extension cable that you've got, which is quite long, plugs into either the 12 volt battery adapter or your 12 volt accessory point. There's an LED on there to show you that the power is on. Just pull open the, the flap on the right hand side, which is the air pump flap. Out pops the 12 volt accessory cable, and then you just connect the two points together. Connect it like so. The unit will power on straight away. You can turn it off, turn it on and then you're ready to go. So you've got the jack. Then you've got the pump. And you've got the illumination. This is a review of the air pump. You can see the display's backlit, so you can see it in the dark. At the moment the units are set for PSI but you can change those to be bars, kilopascals or kilograms per square centimetre. I prefer to use PSI. To change your target pressure you can just press either the plus or minus button to show the um, current display which is at the moment set for 40. Obviously you can change that up and down at will and give it a couple of seconds and it will revert to showing you the actual pressure in the tire. To activate the air pump, you just press this button. Obviously, we've got nothing connected to it, so there will be no pressure shown. But you can see that's how the unit works. In the left-hand compartment, you can see there's a selection of different adapters, a couple of spare fuses and an Allen key. In the right-hand compartment is the air tube, which has got a standard tire fitting on it is really easy to use and there it is and you can see here is the DC connector which I've got powered up to a bench power supply at the moment this is the flashlight feature turn the flashlight on there's an LED that's on the top here so you can see underneath the vehicle for where your jack points going to be and then you've got four bright white LEDs at the front here for general purpose use this is going to be a check of the unladen deployment time so I'm going to start my stopwatch and command it to go to maximum length as you can see it took one minute 13 seconds to reach maximum length. I, I believe with the vehicle loaded, it's going to take longer. And I think it's necessary for you to have the engine running so you can keep the 12 volt power supply at maximum. So with the short extension bar, we get a height from the ground of around about 44 centimeters or 17 and a quarter inches. If we add the long extension bar, we roughly get 53 centimetres or 20 and 3 quarter inches from the ground. Now I've had to use the extended bar in order just to get somewhere close to a jacking point. It's not actually a very wide area, but let's just see how we go. So we're starting to lift.
Okay, I'm going to stop there. We now have a wheel in the air. So as a jack, it actually works. So obviously to get it onto some axle stands, we need to go a lot higher, but there is more range. We're only a fraction of the way. We'll try to go a bit further. It's starting to struggle a little bit. But it is there. So we do have the vehicle in here. Quite amazing really. If you're on the side of the road and you needed to do this, this would be an excellent tool. Even with the extension bar fully wound in, simulating the tyre would be flat and the hum would be lower down, we still managed to get enough stroke on the mechanism to actually lift the wheel off the ground. The one thing that is important is that these are not very good with sideways movement, so as you lift the Hummer up, you're going to put some sideways tension on the bar, which may not be a good idea. But at the moment, it was good enough to get the Hummer in the air, which would be a real time saver. It looks like we can do the job. We're just going to drop it down. One thing that would be important is that you had a battery in good condition, because this probably takes maybe five amps, so it's quite a lot of load. And if your battery's not in good shape then uh, you may struggle you may have to have the engine running to do that obviously if you're a garage or a workshop this is not something for the serious car mechanic for people like myself who rarely need to get their car in the air want to save themselves a lot of physical effort this is not a bad tool i mean in actual fact it's rated at five ton <laughs> in theory this could lift the entire hummer off the ground i don't believe that for a minute uh, it doesn't look strong enough, but um, maybe possible. I'm just going to repeat this similar exercise with the bar wound, the support wound half the way out, um, and with the engine running, just to see if this has got any more strength. Because it, it did begin to slow under the strain of getting to maximum height, so. We'll see how battery voltage may affect it. So here we are. The wheel in the air. It is a bit more lively with the, with the engine running and the, and the battery voltage high. So we're well in the air. We're a good um, three inch, three, three and a half inches off the ground. And we have the car off the ground. How amazing. Well, let's put it back to ground. The other important thing to, is that you must have the handbrake on and the car can't move because that could be disastrous. This unit, I don't think, would take a lot of sideways motion for it to uh, fail. And that's something you don't want to happen. So there we have it. As part of this review, I'm going to try the impact driver. Now I have the um, correct size socket. This is a deep socket, 22 millimeters, not 23. So it's a better fit. And we'll see if we can undo a lug nut. Well, would you believe it can actually take a lug nut off? Pretty amazing. Who would have thought that? Right, let's see if we can put it back on. Change direction. There we've got a look at back on. Pretty amazing. The correct torque setting for a Hummer H2 lug nuts is 140 foot pounds. I've got my torque meter on there. I had to fit a breaker bar because I can't do it with just a short shafted half inch ratchet and we've got to get to a... Well believe it or not the impact driver actually put me back to 140 foot pounds. Pretty amazing really yeah just lucky for that particular setting but good enough obviously you're not going to have a torque meter with you when you're changing your wheel so 
there we go. The good thing is I've checked, checked all of the torques of my lug nuts and they're all the same as when I set them before at 140 foot pounds. So no change there. It's good to know that they stay the set and they haven't come undone. Whilst we're here, we might as well check the tyre inflator. In the corner of the unit is your pipe. Now I've just checked my tyre pressure and it's actually at 38. So I'm going to let it down a few pounds. We're actually at 33. So I'm going to try and get this back up to 40. Checking the gauge on here, it reads 33.2. So this is accurately representing the tyre pressure. So now we're going to try and pump it up. You can set the target value, I believe, on here. If we set it to 40. That's our target pressure. It seems to cycle between showing you what it's set to and what it actually is. Very well done. We'll confirm that with our tire pressure gauge. And it actually reads 39 and a half. I think that's pretty good. That's a success. There are a few things to add about the e-help. Uh, one thing is the actual case itself. On the back is a red triangle. And also we have these uh, three triangular Velcro pads, which are good to stop your case from sliding around on your carpeted floors. I couldn't understand why in my workshop this was stuck to my floor and it was actually stuck on these pads. The other thing uh, to mention, just open it up and have a look at the unit inside, is the safety valve. Now it's not immediately obvious how this works, but that there's a rubber stopper in the middle here, which just pulls out. Inside at the bottom is a, a an Allen head screw, which is the safety release. And there's a, there's an Allen key in the kit on the side where my finger's pointing in there, and you can use that to um, release the pressure. I believe how you do it, I'm not exactly sure. Another point I'd like to add is I've got a very heavy trolley jack which takes a lot of moving. I can barely lift it by hand. I end up dragging it across the floor to get it to where my vehicle's parked and then when I get it there, getting the wheel off the ground is like a workout in the gym. It's a lot of effort and I hope this will make it easier on those rare times that I do need to get the wheel off the ground. One thing I'd like to check is if I can actually lift the whole back end of the Hummer up using this. It's an exercise I will do. Thank you for watching this video. Please give the thumbs up, share and subscribe. Oh, and don't forget the alert bell.